Welcome to TechieCast, Jax. Joe Holbrook here, the Cloud Tech Guy. Really excited today to be talking about an area that just seems to come up over and over, and that is how do I become a cloud engineer and what do I need to do to get my first interview? Well, that's, of course, a loaded question. There's a lot there that we have to do to get you ready to become a cloud engineer because, again, it's a wide area. It's very technical. It's not like uh, becoming more of a uh, sort of less technical uh, kind of role that you're focusing on. This is a very technical role, the cloud engineer role. So because of that, it's a wide area. We've got different cloud providers and you need to learn about different aspects of every cloud provider just about. Uh, and if you want to specialize and you have to know AWS or Google or Azure really, really well. Now, when it comes to some of the questions that I get uh, as far as becoming a cloud engineer, what do I need to do? Um, I have a post that I put together. Uh, the link for that will be in the description below on most of the platforms that you'll see the, this on. Uh, it's also on the GCP gurus and techcommanders.com as well. So the post is called, uh, what are some of the top uh, questions around becoming a cloud engineer? How do I become a cloud engineer effectively? So let's talk about some of these. So for example, when, it, when we become a cloud engineer, we, of course, should have a really good understanding of cloud computing. I mean, it just goes without saying, right? What is cloud computing? Why, why is it important? Another thing, too, that we probably want answers to when we're considering becoming a cloud engineer is, what does this cloud engineer do? What do we do every day? What, it, what, it, what can we expect in, in a lot of roles? So this is a really good question as well because we have to uh, we have to realize that there isn't you know the same role in every company right every company is going to have their own take on what a cloud engineer is now when it comes to a couple other questions that I'll talk about quickly here uh, what kind of jobs uh, for example would a cloud engineer have uh, what are the skills and certifications so we'll talk about that. I also, uh, what I did in the post as well, and I, I provided you additional links uh, as well to follow up on, on these. Uh, I'd also recommend too that when you look at the post, uh, that you also take a look at some of the jobs that are available on LinkedIn. Uh, and that would really give you a great idea of what a cloud engineer would do. Now, do we need a degree is another question that I commonly get as well. The answer is no in most cases. Now, of course, if you want to work for, uh, let's say, an Accenture or a KPMG or something, that's a different story. You'll need to go waste, you know, a lot of time on a degree in most cases and hope you could get that job. So, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but if you just want to get working, you want to start out somewhere, uh, there's no need for a degree in most cases. Even uh, Google, Facebook, I think Apple as well has even stated that. Uh, there's really, again, it's more about experience, more about understanding the certification details, passing that certification, uh, and then a lot of this stuff you're going to learn on the job. So this is the beautiful part about becoming a cloud engineer, is a lot of this you're just going to learn as you go. Now, when I typically interview uh, folks, for example, uh, for other companies, uh, or when I, uh, for example, help people prepare for an interview as a coach, I can tell you one thing that you know really can make the difference between that candidate having a shot or not having a shot. It really comes down to how you present yourself, right? It's about confidence. Also, too, the the term that I like to talk about is called fake it till you make it, right? Well, we all probably have heard that before. Basically, it just says pretend you know something or pretend you can do something when you can't. Well, that doesn't work in the world of cloud engineering generally you're going to run into very technical interviewers and they're going to they're going to know if you know what you're doing or not. It's not something you're going to fake in a lot of cases. So uh, so because of that, be honest, you you got to just prepare. All right, so as far as you know some other questions are in the in the post as well, but I want to talk about a few of these and and just sort of give you some insight. Now, one of the things when it comes to what is cloud computing why is important we know that with cloud computing, we have three deployment models, uh, actually four deployment models, three service models, I should say. There's five essential characteristics. Uh, the goal of this 
particular podcast is not to go through that. So let's talk about cloud engineer. What does this person do? Now, once again, there is no one size fits all here. Uh, one of the things that I think is so important to, to sort of take uh, and run with is just realize that it's sort of like when you're interviewing uh, for any job, right? You have an expectation of what you think the job might be when you walk in based on the description, uh, based on the interviewers that you speak with, or based on, for example, the recruiter, whatever that situation is, or the company, you know, uh, also to Glassdoor reviews are beautiful as well to sort of figure out the culture of the company. But again, it all comes down to realizing that maybe that job isn't really what it was advertised to be. I've been on every side of the coin here. I've interviewed for roles. I've worked at companies that would advertise roles. I've been a third party, you know, trying to vet people. And sometimes the way a role is sold is really not the way it's perceived uh, to the other party. And what I mean is, is that you may think that the role is entry level when in reality, they want someone that's going to do Golang and they want, you know, a weird take of programming like Perl added in there or something. Uh, and then, you know, they want you to be a security guru and be able to stop, you know, a DDoS attack in three minutes, right? So again, it's all about uh, understanding what you're walking into and how you handle that interview. So my piece of advice is to always understand what they're looking for before you go in and prepare for that, but you have to expect that they're going to ask outside of that as well. So for example, uh, questions might come up and, and again, in the post, I've got this written down for you. Uh, for example, like what are some of the job duties you'd expect, like secure data, uh, provision, you know, data resources, for example, if it's on AWS, we may need a provision as three resources. If it's on Google, maybe it's cloud storage. Maybe we want to use, uh, for example, uh, tools that we could basically wrangle our data, visualize that data, whatever that situation is. One of the things that we have to deal with too is dealing, for example, with, uh, for example, development-based roles nowadays. So when I say development-based roles, what I'm getting at is, we have to sort of know a lot about everything. And one thing that comes up now quite a bit is DevOps, right? So DevOps is something that we're going to have to know about. We're going to need to know a CI pipeline, a CD pipeline. We want to know the difference, you know, between uh, continuous deployment, uh, integration, and uh, delivery. And all of these things will come up uh, in, in a lot of interviews, especially when you go to the second, third round. Now, Testing is another area as well. How do you integrate tools? APIs is another area as well. So again, there, there's a lot to sort of consider here. Now, one of the things that comes up too that I think is important is, is a cloud engineer role always advertised as a cloud engineer? And the answer is no. Uh, one of the things that comes up is sometimes that cloud architect role is really more of an engineer role. That cloud developer role is it really a cloud engineer role? Uh, and again, it's all about understanding that it could be that the job description and the title of the job may not actually match up to what it is. And again, that goes back to what I was mentioning before. Sometimes a job isn't exactly what it seems to be. So again, you know, look at the title, look at the role. Um, again, my only advice there is just really understand what they're looking for. And sometimes, too, I'm going to be honest, some employees don't really know. Uh, it's just a fact. They, they don't know what they really want. They just want everything. So we have to prepare for that as well. So, again, go into the interview and uh, realize that uh, sometimes you'll need to be flexible. Sometimes you'll have to be direct. Sometimes you'll have to uh, sort of draw the line. Sometimes you'll have to jump hoops. It just depends on your situation in life as well, I think. Now, another thing that comes up is what what is the job market like for cloud engineer? Another question that I get, and that's really hard to answer because, you know, if you're in, geez, you know, uh, Houston, Texas, 
it's going to be different than if you're in Augusta, Maine, or you're in, you know, Bangalore versus Singapore. I mean, it, it's going to be different. So it's hard to answer that question. Now, I will say that a lot of roles are remote still, and that's a good thing. And if you can sell yourself to a company in London, and they're going to let you work remote from D.C. or whatever, let's say, then more power to you, right? That's great. That's awesome. So because of that, it's it's a question that I sort of always answer is you got to know your own geography, right? You got to know your own location. An example is because I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, it's, you know, one of those towns where you sort of go to kill your tech career. It's a great place to uh, sort of not be dependent on the system. And that was the reason I chose it uh, as well was because it gave me the opportunity to not be dependent on a job. It made me sort of focus and do other things in life, uh, create investments, uh, create companies, uh, help other people. So um, my advice is this, look at your market, understand what is in demand and what isn't. So, so for example, in Jacksonville, there isn't a lot of roles for cloud. Uh, you have to go to Orlando or Miami, which is uh, definitely not a commute, it's more of a move. Uh, so because of that, it's either remote or it's not. So know your market. Uh, if you're in DC, I can tell you because that was a market that I lived in and worked in and you know probably 15 years of my life. I can tell you right now that that market is totally different than Jacksonville or even Orlando or or Miami, uh, for example, Atlanta. All right, so a couple more things to talk about before we close out for the day. Now, one of the things to uh, also think about is, uh, you know, what do we need to do to um, to become a cloud engineer? Now, this is something that is not a one size fits all, but there is a template out there, and I did put one together as well in my ebook uh, that I had written as well called How to Become a Cloud Engineer in Less Than Six Months. But basically, you know, always get familiar with the industry. Um, always find a coach, find a mentor, join meetup groups, a couple of things that I think is important too. Uh, consider if you want to go and join a cloud boot camp. Now I've taught cloud boot camps in the past for companies, uh, two mainly. Uh, one is uh, Quick Start Learning and the other is Simply Learn. And I can tell you that, you know, the quality of the boot camps can vary widely. The cost can vary as well. And the value to the student could vary as well. And the cost could be, you know, three, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. And if you have that grade, if you want to make payments on that, that's your call. On the other hand, I certainly know uh, people that have worked their way up uh, basically to uh, basically just taking courses on AWS, for example, uh, free, even on Udemy uh, as well. Uh, and they've been able to secure a tech job. So this is, you know, again, the route is going to depend on you. It's going to depend on how much you're going to put into it. It's going to depend also uh, as well um, the time that you have and the resources you have. It comes down to typically two things in life time and money uh, and uh, I, I would also probably add uh, one more thing to that as well attitude and effort but again those are really the two main constraints typically and because of that we have to focus on uh, what we're going to invest in and how we're going to invest in it what is the time that we have and we want to consider those things so to sum it all up becoming cloud engineer is certainly a great role uh, to consider lots of great opportunities uh, lots of great articles on it as well as far as demand but also take a look at LinkedIn of course as I previously mentioned and see what's out there uh, take a, a boot camp courses get a mentor whatever you need look at meetup groups lots of great resources out there that's all that I had for today thanks for joining